to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and we're at Cybos 2016 in Geneva. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. What's the current state of play with real-time payments? So I think we've seen quite a transformation in uh, certainly in central clearing and payments around the world over the last maybe three years. I remember coming to Cybos three years ago uh, and the talk was, so what's this instant payments, what's this immediate payments? I think the debate over what it was actually called was raging for, uh, for many years. But now I think it's very clear that we're seeing the introduction of real-time payments across the world. Uh, we've been operating that, the faster payment system in the UK now for about eight years. And uh, we've been very fortunate to have invested a lot of time and effort in developing our capability to take to other markets and we're seeing the adoption of real-time payments accelerate quite significantly. Uh, in a couple of years' time, we'll have probably nearer 35 markets worldwide that will have implemented the technology. Uh, and we see our role both uh, as Vocalink and in, in partnership with other providers such as ACI uh, of enabling the ecosystem to really take advantage of that new infrastructure. And the word fast or faster has lots of implications and lots of challenges and opportunities for the banks and uh, other infrastructure providers. And we're very excited about the uh, speed with which the technology is being adopted and also with the opportunities that are, are provided to uh, banks and to businesses and consumers. Uh, and it's taken a lot of interest from regulators and governments as well who also see a role and, and indeed have a role in the uh, rollout of the ecosystem. Craig, what's the industry looking for in terms of support as it moves to real time? And how do service providers need to respond? What the industry needs is to turn that into usage. And so in many respects, I think the fintechs community has a role to play in accelerating the, the path to, to ubiquity. In other words, how do we get everyone using the schemes quickly and connecting to the schemes quickly. At the end of the day, payments is a network effect. It's about everyone participating. And so anything one can do to make it ubiquitous and to help people connect to the schemes quickly, I think is a key thing. And then obviously related, the flip side of the coin to usage is utility. People aren't going to use something unless there's value add in the experience. Real-time payments or immediate payments, you know, conceptually has a lot of utility. I think the real challenge is to make that real and practical with use cases that appeal to the consumer and appeal to businesses. So there's a real compelling reason to pay in a different way, to pay in real time or to pay immediately. What do you think are the main challenges and opportunities for financial institutions in the payments landscape of the future? Well, it's very much related to, to the concept of, of utility and ubiquity again. Um, for the, the banks and the providers of, of access and the infrastructures, I think it comes down to business case. Really understanding what is the economics behind this and how does those economics fit into the broader payments world where the, the current economics are being somewhat challenged and disrupted. And so a lot of people and a lot of the conversation is about business case. And I think that represents both one of the biggest challenges, you know, articulating this value and who's going to make what money and why. You know, is it for the greater good or is it profit driven and you know, every mix in between. And then secondly, the opportunity to find those value adds and to use them for competitive or for commercial self-interest. So I mean, just building on what Craig said, I think those value adds um, going in a number of directions in, in terms of the early uh, visible signs of how we see people thinking about that utility and utilization uh, of the infrastructure. So if I talk about data, um, enriched data, richer data, enhanced data, I mean essentially using a new real-time payment system, the ability to carry significant uh, amounts of data becomes a, a reality. Um, and, though, and those businesses particularly, but also consumers and, and governments, etc., who can build an ecosystem of services and propositions using that enhanced data presents uh, a, a number of those opportunities. Coming with that, uh, both the faster and the enriched data capabilities, come some challenges, particularly around fraud and risk management. So if money's generally moving quicker, then we have to be quicker, smarter, better, at, at ensuring we stay one, one step ahead of, of those parties that wish to take advantage of that um, in a negative way. Certainly ensuring that the cybersecurity 
uh, the way we think about cybersecurity in these new payment networks is, is very important. Um, and I think a combination of, of data and um, cybersecurity and the, the sort of mobile digital environment evolving also to take advantage um, of the new infrastructure is where those opportunities are presented. We see our partnership with, with ACI as the sort of the first step of, of two leading companies coming together to develop a series of propositions over a new ecosystem. Um, and that's the thing that I'm most excited about. And it's not just about a national agenda, it's about how we expand from a national agenda to a global agenda by connecting those national instances and infrastructures to deliver that proposition. Because we're all more global today and certainly our banks are more global. Um, and we see those banks needing to think about customer propositions on a global basis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.